All right, guys, Papa Pepper and Monster Truck. Hard at work in the garden. Snake gourds, Chinese red noodle beans, and Malabar spinach. That is going to be our dinner tonight, isn't it, son? Happy, healthy, hearty, straight from the garden. That's going to be what we're eating. All right guys, Papa Pepper back on the homestead. Had a long, crazy time. Turned into a, a longer time away from home working than I was planning on it. Probably heading back out again tomorrow. But actually, two days ago, in the evening, I came out to these snake gourds to give you guys a heads up before I left. And and now, in, in 48 hours, my big snake gourd is put on six inches but there's more. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a little bit about my snake gourds. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I'm growing them. And then I'm gonna show you just a, uh, it's like a two for one. I'm gonna show you guys just a, a simple meal with my top three favorite garden plants. And it's almost gonna just be that simple where, uh, where it's just kind of the top three garden plants. But check this out. Okay, All right, snake gourd haven. Things are coming in. We're getting them growing. I'm actually gonna, you know, harvest a couple today. And I'll tell you who, what, when, where, and why. But this is that snake gourd, guys. This is it. It was at 35 inches just the other day, two days ago. It was at 35 inches. Now, before I measure it, these are the two snake gourds that I saved for seeds last year. So these are the two that dried and got where they could. There is both a shorter one and a longer one. Okay, there's that one. See? A difference and they were just kind of maybe two inches came off the top would be about most so when I stick the smaller one up next to this guy get about the same thing you can see this one's already longer than the smaller snake gourd I grew last year moreover when we compare it to the big one let's scoot him up okay there's the big one ends and you head up it looks like it's pretty much the same size so that is some pretty exciting stuff for a number of reasons. Number one, anyone who got snake gourds from me, whether they were from the contest or um, the ones that they bought you know, from my store, they came from the bigger of these two snake gourds. I may have mixed in a couple of the little ones too, but predominantly I wanted to get the seeds from the bigger snake gourd out into the hands of people so that they could try to grow their own. And the fact that my biggest one this year, I mean, remember guys, I just took off to Wisconsin a little bit ago. I didn't have any going. And now I've already got one that, check this out, you want to know the length of this thing? I'll measure it up. Oh yeah, put it up there. Pretty good, right about there. Bring it down here. We're at about 41 inches, guys. It was at about 35 when I left. Now I do not expect this one, you know, to get another foot in length. I honestly, just don't. I think it can grow bigger. I think we may get another six inches out of it. I think I may be able to hit four feet, but I don't think I'm gonna get another, um, you know, another foot out of it. Supposedly, these can grow up to seven feet in length. I've never grown any that big. Last year was my first year growing them and they became so impressive to me that I, uh, that they immediately pretty much sprung into my top three garden plants. Now, I'm still working on the canopy up here. So I'll show you that, and it's cool just to kind of even sit out here on top of this ladder at night in the evening, and uh, the hummingbirds come and pollinate these things. But here's a couple I'm going to cut. Here's one. Uh, this guy could be a good one to save. It really could. I could grow it longer, but because it's already so fat, I'm going to cut it off or pinch it off. Oh, uh, monster truck, go give me my scissors quick. And I'm gonna eat it right in the basket. It's somewhere right there. And then this one too, you see how it's like just curving way off to the side? So this one I'm taking out for food. Um, there are some other ones coming in that are doing all right. You know, this guy is getting pretty fat up top. 
and then he's still real skinny at the bottom. So I think he's got quite a bit of growth that he could shoot out. And then I still actually got to fight this squash bug battle. Right now I just squashed the squash bugs. But there are some other ones, you know, this one too. It's getting started skinny at the end here. It could, it could go a ways. So we're gonna let those kind of ride out. I'm gonna take those two off over here. This guy doesn't really have much competition for whatever root he's coming from um, as far as others growing. So I'm not really, you know, just thinning everything just to try to get as much to him as I can. To me, there's a couple little ones getting started, but they're not gonna be a whole lot of competition right now. So we're gonna let this guy rock out. We're gonna let him dry up. And what I'm hoping is that I can keep these plants going for a while. Right now, I've amended the soil to a bit. I'm uh, mostly just using a rabbit manure tea is, is my main fertilizer for these guys. So I'm trying to get that going. And then I think I'm actually gonna take some bones and crush them up crush up some bones and uh, sprinkle that to the top of the soil too. So we're actually gonna get the cut going on here. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. This guy's pretty good, but like I said, he's, uh, he's where I don't really need him right now. Oh yeah, he's heavy. I don't really need him. Um, wow, what do you think, son? Ready wow. to eat snake gourd again? been a while we're having dinner tonight on me because mama's been taking care of things while i've been gone i'm gonna get this guy here too give me a quick snap there we go all right guys there they are these are two eaters they're not very long neither one of those is two feet in length we were definitely eating lots of them in the three foot range last year um if we get more you know we certainly can too but those are two ones that are ready for eating one of those is going to be our meal tonight. The other one I'll probably save. Um, oh, this guy. A couple of nice guys up in there. So uh, we'll see how they work out. But I think we might get another nice long one on this end. So we'll see. So anyway, my idea for these guys, just make sure they're getting whatever I can give them. Try to keep the bugs off of them. Try to keep them fed on a regular basis. It's probably about almost every other day now. I'm giving them rabbit manure tea. And then what I'm gonna do is just kinda like I said, if I see a lot of competition, those two go in there. If one's doing really well, and I think it'll grow really long, and the other one's next to it, I'll eat the other one next to it sooner than I normally would, just to kinda alleviate the pressure from, from the other guy. Um, these guys here, yeah, the Chinese red noodle beans. There are so many, just because I took that trip to Wisconsin for uh, four days. There are so many that I'm going to be saving for seeds just because they're so far gone. They're so far past, but that means there'll be extras. Lots of them in our store. We still have some available right now. And then we'll be re-upping our quantity um, for what's for sale in our online store. That'll be great. And guys, again, um, I've got a video coming out about why this is one of my top three plants. But this is only 20 plants here, which I touched on in the video. You know, from two of these seed pods, you get more than 20 seeds, which is crazy to think that these two things, if you saved them and planted them, could produce everything you see here. Um, and then some, because we've harvested so many. So very cool. And then I'm gonna sit here and hit the Malabar spinach too, and give it a good pick. A lot of this stuff, I mean, look at this guys. And again, I didn't plant any of this, this year. It reseeded itself, so. Very cool, I've got some more friends coming over in a bit. I'm just gonna dig up some of the smaller ones. You know, some of these guys ain't too tall yet. And uh, let them transplant them back to their properties and get their own endless summer harvest of greens going through the whole heat of the year. So very cool, you ready, Sonny Boy? Let's go get a bowl and let's get picking. And this, guys, 
I just picked two days ago, so not only did it put out a handful in two days, but all of those probably 200 pods that are going to seed, it's supporting all of those and finishing up the seeds in those, making them fully mature and ready and ripe. So this will be for our stir fry tonight with the Malabar spinach and one of those snake guards. And I think I'm gonna grab uh, just an onion too for uh, some extra seasoning from the garden here. <laughs> yeah. All right, son. So guys, here's the snake gourds. And between the snake gourds and the Malabar spinach, we spent less than 10 minutes, just the two of us, picking all this. Um, probably actual pick time, maybe like seven minutes or so. But then we're gonna take one of these guys with those and pretty much have that be our meal. And like I said, we'll, we'll add in one of these. But not bad. And all summer long, we can do this once they start cranking up. I've, I've been having the Malabar and the noodle beans for a while now, just waiting on my snake gourds. Now they're coming in. So we're super excited. First fresh snake gourd of the year, right son? Mm -hmm. Plus we still got frozen ones, uh, barely, but a little bit of frozen ones from last year in the, uh, in the freezer. All right, let's get cooking. So to cook these down, I'll use a medium heat. And just because a lot of you guys haven't seen some of these um, foods prepared, I'll also show you how I um, cut them up and prepare them. For this one, I'll also be using a third stick of butter. That's gonna prevent things from sticking to the pan and also give it some flavor. So we'll be using the Malabar spinach, snake gourds, noodle beans, and then also tossing in an onion for this one. So with the snake gourds, they're very long. I trim off the ends and then usually cut them into sections, maybe about thirds. I'll slice them uh, lengthwise in half and then in half again. So that way each time I chop them, I'll be getting quarters. I find this is a good size for the skillet. And then especially just to appreciate our first one of the year um, and all the flavor that actually comes out of the garden, not gonna be using you know, any seasoning other than the butter here, I'm just allowing the natural flavors of the food to come out as we cook it. Besides being so productive, and uh, putting out such large fruit. The cool thing about the snake gourds, and one of the reasons they're one of my favorite, is that our family will get about a meal out of each snake gourd. Or if we get a really big one, we can actually get multiple meals out of one snake gourd. So of course, cutting them this way saves a lot of extra time chopping. If you were just gonna try to dice it up like a chef or something like that, it's just easier to slice through this way for me. So to kind of take away some of the um, mysteriousness of this, you know, if you've never seen how to actually chop these up, this is just the way that I do it. And uh, now you know, makes it easier. With the noodle beans, I'd line them up on the ends that we picked from the plant, just so I can chop off that end. The other end will uh, keep, but you may have to pull some remnants of the flour off the tail of it. And then I like to cut these in about three quarter inch to one inch pieces. Um, holding just a big handful together and then slicing my way through slowly uh, down the whole thing, which can be, you know, 18, 20 inches all the way down. So doing a whole handful at once makes less chopping and has them be a really good uh, size for the stir fry. And then also for your mouth too. I like a nice bite sized piece when all these are mixed up. For other things, I'll leave them longer, but this just makes sense for this type of meal. And then keep these guys stirring too. Um, watch that we're cooking the kind of thicker, heavier foods first. Just uh, make sure to keep them moving. Keep them from burning. You can also cover them if you'd prefer. The onion's a very uh, versatile one. It's a good way to add some flavor to it and a lot of different ways to present it. A lot of times I will uh, dice them up really fine and really small if I'm using a raw or, um, you know, a raw onion or a hotter onion. These are rather sweet, so I'm just kind of quartering them and leaving them in little strips. 
they mix into this uh, food well and uh, my children, you know, enjoy eating them. So the last thing we'll be putting in is the Malabar spinach because it's uh, a thicker, or sorry, it's a thinner one. It doesn't take as long to cook. What I find works best for me is if I just stack them and get about a handful and then slice them like a grid where about every three quarters inch or inch I slice them one way and then rotate it 90 degrees and slice them the other way so I wind up with a bunch of uh, inch or three quarter inch squares. Again, that cooks down really well and it uh, fits in the spoon really well with some of the other stuff in the stir fry. And this is actually the same way we cut them to freeze them. I'll uh, rinse them off, let them dry up, slice them like this, and then just put them in freezer bags for the winter. Works well for us. Mama Pepper prefers these cooked anyway. I like them fresh and cooked, but uh, she prefers them cooked, so this is a good meal to get her to eat a lot of these good, rich, tasty greens. Honestly, this smells so good right now, too. So as with any meal that you're, um, you know, cooking, you can feel free to sample a couple pieces, make sure that the whole thing is done. A lot of times I just kind of know them well enough by now that I can tell. But this is a nice, simple, easy meal, guys. This is my top three garden plants, plus an onion and some butter thrown in. There's nothing more to this, nothing less. That's it. Wow guys, I just came outside to get some better lighting and uh, set this on my lap. And I just exclaimed to Pinky Pepper, I'm like, wow, this smells awesome. So all this is, guys, is fresh out the garden except for the butter, for one. We've got snake gourd in there, we've got the Chinese red noodle bean, we've got some alabar spinach, and we've got some onion. Uh, kind of one of our sweeter onions. And all I'm going to do is run this around a couple of the little peppers, maybe mama pepper, and especially the snake gourd. Mmm. Mmm. It's been a while since we had it fresh. We've been eating um, frozen stuff through the winter. And, uh, man, mm. I didn't even put seasoning on this guy. It's just a little bit of butter to get her going in. But that's all we do for these guys to uh, freeze them, too. I showed you guys kind of how I chop up some of these things just because they're different. And this is what works for us with how to chop up the noodle beans, the Malabar spinach, and the snake gourds. But I just bag it like that too and just have stir fries ready to go. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Yep, Pinky? <laughs> Alright, Pinky Peppers here. A little bell pepper. Let me give it a go. Going for the gourd. And that's just one quarter, you know, wow, of a round. that is good. You want to try any? Oh yeah, she was going back for more before I even asked. And we're going to have this with our dinner tonight, I guess, Mama. Pepper threw in some chicken, too. So we're going to have a meat with it, but wow. <clears throat> what do you like about those plants? They're fun to grow, and they're really yummy. And how are they to harvest? They're fun. Yeah, they're not too bad, are they? I like them, too, because a lot of them you can just harvest standing up. Yeah. Not gonna be bent over picking all day in the garden. Ain't that right, Belle? Bell Pepper. <coughs> hey baby girl, how are you, daughter? <coughs> yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Alright, so Mama Pepper's up. Fresh snake gourds, onions, <coughs> Malabar spinach, and noodle beans. Super tasty. We spent about seven minutes harvesting vegetables for that meal. Monster mm. truck and I. 
Mm. I love the noodle beans too. Yeah, snake gourds are amazing, but I love the noodle beans and together. And all I did was mm. just, I cooked them in butter. I didn't put any seasoning on there. I love it all. This is great. A bed of goodness. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna save some for dinner, lady. Okay. What? A little warm. All right, guys, monster truck, the big hard worker. What are you thinking? He's going straight for the gourd, too. These kids are just like me. It's good. Been a while since you tasted one of those fresh, huh? <laughs> nice to see the, ooh, onion. Nice to see the fruit of your labor, huh? And how delicious it is. Yeah. We'll have dinner soon, okay? You give it your seal of approval? No? Do you give it your walrus of approval? <laughs> oh. Hey puppy. puppy. Hey daughter. You wanna try a little bit of snake gourd there? Yeah. Stab one up and see what you can get. Oh yeah, she's gone for everything. Oops. All fresh from the garden, child. <laughs> oh, fresh snake gourds, noodle beans, and Malabar spinach. Eh, eh, mm. It's been a while since we had them snake gourds, huh? Rosemary, no snake gourd for you. But when you don't get any snake gourds, do it ourselves. Here we go. Nope, somebody's oh finishing the stuff that got dropped. Cleanup crew. No, what do you guys think of that? Good. Good. Let's see what Bugger thinks. Get it, get Buddy, it. you want to try snake gourd? It's a little hot, but it's tasty. Let's see what he thinks. What you thinking, Bugger? Is this tasty food? <laughs> no. Hey, Bugger. Is that tasty food? Yeah. Yeah. Well guys, that's that anyway. I just wanted to give you guys kind of a, a flavor <laughs> for uh, for how I cook some of these because a lot of people look at some things in my garden and they say, hey, that looks neat. It grows well. You're really excited about it. But I've never seen it. I've never grown it. I don't even know what to do with it. And people kind of keep asking, can you at least show us kind of how to cook it? What you do with it? And that's one reason too that I decided to uh, show you guys the way that I chop up some of the stuff for use. Um, I've got some other ideas for how to use snake gourds and some different things I'm gonna try this year. So that'll be exciting moving forward. And then also kind of as I grow those snake gourds, like I said, 41 inches right now. If I can get it to four feet, I'm gonna be really happy. Um, I just kind of select the straighter ones, try to find ones that are kind of one to a plant or one in a general area. And then trying to make sure that, you know, the plants just stay watered stay debugged and they're getting some of the nutrients they need so you know what with these ones here this one's definitely growing straighter and it's younger based on thickness than this one here and this one looks like it's getting uh maybe eaten up a little bit by some cucumber beetles so i'm gonna take this one and i'm just gonna see if i can twist it off i don't have my knife or scissors on me at the second but these guys are so close together that I'm thinking they might even be growing off the same plant um, they seem to come in kind of two different colors green come on come on big thing you know I'm gonna get the hacksaw I'll be back. Hey, yeah, you can't put all your snake gourds in one basket just because they don't make a basket big enough. But if I want to try to win this contest, at least kind of maybe place high. I'm gonna take things like this that just probably won't grow as long. You can see that giant kink. Let the other one grow, see how it does. And I think 
you know, they may even have been off the same plant. And we'll kind of watch this guy too and the little guy here. But we'll just kind of figure out what's the better horse to bet on. And then we'll, then we'll let it go. So, happy with these so far. I really am. Happy with the flavor. Happy with uh, them growing because I was struggling before. But we've overcome that and just looking forward to seeing how everyone else does because I think it's exciting. So, all right, guys. Hopefully that helps some of you guys out there. I'm looking forward to seeing some of these people are growing snake gourds like crazy out there. I don't expect to win, but I expect to have a lot of fun because I'm growing snake gourds and they are a lot of fun and tasty to boot. But I also want to see when some people start trying to eat some of these snake gourds, what they actually think because, like I said, there's a reason they're one of my top three garden plants. I love it like this, and even the noodle beans in Malabar, you can eat a raw. The snake gourds are when we cook together with them like this, but to me, they're very versatile for different culinary purposes. We definitely enjoy them, and I think they make a rather attractive presentation, too, on, uh, on the plate. So, all right, guys, pop out. All right, guys, so with the trivia from the last video, the correct answers were that the Japanese Yuruzu and winged bean was a bean, that this guy here was almost three feet long, and uh, the little ones that got the bulblets are the Egyptian walking onions. So if you got those three questions right, you were in the running for a shout out in this video. And today the shout out goes to Googie's Fairy's Farm. Googie's Fairy Farm, you're the big winner. Thanks for watching and for commenting. All right guys, so for this video, what was the type of garden plant I had that was 41 inches long already? Question number two. How many different things did I get from my garden to put in here? I'll give you a clue. I started with my top three, right? But how many different things from my garden did I put in here? What was the only thing I added to it? There was no salt, there was no pepper, there was no turmeric. What was the only thing I added to it? And question number four, how did my family enjoy it? Did they give it a thumbs up or did they give it a thumbs down? If you know the answers to those questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be choosing one person who answers all four of them correctly to give a shout out to in an upcoming video. Papa out. As always, I'm Papa Pepper, and I'd like to remind you, don't post for free. If you'd like to be part of a revolution in social media, an economic power to the people where users can actually blog for cryptocurrency, then I'd recommend that you check out steamit.com and join the revolution. Pop out.